I want to put this word out here because you work in offices, you work in a diverse um, environment. But there's a thing called moderate blackness, and it's where people have cultural identification. You could be from Ireland or Scotland, uh, Wales. You could come from uh, the north. And we identify the, the, the identifiers are our voice, so we'll have a particular kind of accent. But there's environments that we occupy where we're forced because of the dominant culture in the office or the school or wherever, where we have to take on the traits of the other group. So I come from a Jamaican background and I know if I walk into a boardroom, I can't speak with a Jamaican accent or I'm not supposed to. A young person who comes from an inner city background that speaks with street language cannot go into the school and express that. And we suppress the language. You, it happens through dress codes. Question I'd put to most of you, if you're a woman, if you're a man, if you're gay, whoever you are, think of the amount of times when you've been in environments and you have to adjust yourself because of the pressure that the dominant philosophy in that space doesn't reflect you. And in schools and in education, is predominantly white institutions. So for black children going into those spaces, there's a moderation on their language, their dress code, their cultural values, the food they get at lunchtime, that actually creates a level of distress. So it doesn't mean that our young people are not clever. It doesn't mean they're not bright. It means that the adjustments they have to make sometimes is problematic. So I want you all to consider, do you make people adjust? Do you force them to be anything other than they are? Because surely authenticity should drive curiosity and investigation that's what makes marketing and branding and inventions important but what happens is that's removed and replaced with a certain benchmark that excludes a lot of people so again it's very important in education and in life that is it appropriate for take on the traits of other people to the detriment of our own self next there is such a thing called blackness and whiteness Whiteness is the recognition that white people are different, are diverse. You put a prefix, working class, white people, middle class, white people, upper class, white people. So white people are separated on class. They have a racialized identity and operate within a privileged context in society. So even though working class white people and myself, I'm more qualified than a lot of working class white people, but the expression of whiteness whether it's through the far right, whether it's through what I see on TV, still excludes me. Blackness is like a counter narrative, which is basically saying, uh, and no different to if you choose to become feminist or an LGBT activist, in opposition to the dominant culture that said, this is the way you've got to be through acculturation, you assert a sense of identity. So blackness is about the exploration, expression, and recognizing and assigning ideas and values. So therefore, because race is socially constructed, we perform blackness, we perform whiteness. And in the inner city, people tend to define notions of black based on urban. But I meet black people from Devon and Cornwall, from Scotland, from Ireland, from rural communities. So blackness is as broad as whiteness. But a lot of the times when you do the research on this in a classroom, um, and I had an experience when I, was, when I was very young where a teacher, I did a geography lesson and a teacher took out a mango seed and I, and I grew up in a white family and I didn't know what a mango seed was, but the assumption was I did because I was black. He never took into consideration I was in a white family that stripped me of any notion of my blackness. So I didn't know, likewise children in care go through the same thing. So once again, blackness is diverse, but it's important because blackness is tied to your consciousness. So blackness is how you think, process, and express notions of being black. So therefore, for somebody like me, I'm as comfortable with Charles Dickens as I am listening to the lyrics of Little Wayne. I'm as comfortable going to a Michelin star restaurant as I am listening to a drill track. My point being is, is that blackness doesn't limit itself to definitions of being black that other people define. So I expand the notion of being black. I've got a PhD, which means I'm a doctor. 
that puts me in a very different position to a young person from an inner city in Peckham or South Africa or maybe a Native American or an Aboriginal that may be living on a plantation, may be excluded in the outback. So therefore, once again, from an educational standpoint, we need to understand the terms of reference. Black does not equal urban. Black is much more diverse than that. And, and I'm sure you know that. But I'm saying intellectually, within how we do, the words we speak, the, 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 the copy we read tends to exclude the kind of wider context of how we position blackness. Next. Black arts and culture. I wrote a book a while back after George Floyd, what I identified and I came up with a hypothesis that when George Floyd died, I saw the first image on a video camera. I then saw graffiti images. I then heard R&B singers in the church. I then heard hip hop artists and I heard artists. So I wrote a book basically arguing that black artists historically as going back as from the uh, beginning of the 20th century with the Niagara movement. And then it went on to the Harlem Renaissance and then the Negritude movement in France and the radical black arts movements. Black arts and culture historically going as far back as Africa have defined how black experiences are mediated. So if you want to understand how black people are thinking and feeling, you can't just go to the textbooks. You have to listen to the music, the dance, the theater, the, the other type, the programs that are produced, the documentaries. Therefore, black arts and culture becomes a form of cultural education. We have academic education, but we have cultural education where we learn about the past, where we learn about ideas and thoughts, where we learn about self. Toni Morrison, the famous novelist, she wrote a book called Beloved and she was asked, why don't you put white people in your novels? And she just said, how many white people put black people in their novels? She goes, she wanted to construct a world which was free from the clutter of racism and wanted to engage with stories that she remembers from being passed on from her ancestors, which didn't include white people. And it's not that white people were excluded. It just meant that the exploration of the world didn't want to have racism in there. And I'm saying that black arts and culture is the best education for ignorant people about the live reality because it spans everything from the good, the bad, and the fantastic.